I'm Dayuan Huang. Glad to be here to present DigiSpace Designing Thumb to Fingers Touching to Faces for One-Handed and Ice-Free Interactions. So, authors of this project come from National Taiwan University, Academia Sinica, and Keio University. So, let's talk about unbody interface first. We know it transfers human skin into touch interfaces, therefore we could uh, uh, engage our fingers on the skin, on ears, on forearms, or on our finger pads, or on our other body locations. So it actually augments touch widgets on our fingers, uh, on, on our skin, and uh, allows us to manipulate them by fingers, so, uh, allowing users to uh, perform always available and eyes-free touch interactions. So the basic idea of this project is that we found, we concluded a lot of advantages of uh, thumb to fingers touch interfaces. So thumb to fingers touch interfaces augment the touch widgets on fingers and uh, allow users to manipulate the, them by thumbs. So as you can see, the interaction process requires solely single hand and our human hands are dexterous to perform accurate and steady finger movement. Finally, uh, since the distance between our thumb and the fingers is short, the motion cost is also low. So previous works uh, have demonstrated a lot of uh, examples about implementing uh, thumb to fingers touch interfaces by using the camera images, by using the changes of the magnetic signals, or by using the changes of the muscle movements. So these reality work are all uh, amazing and great, and they mainly focus on the sensing techniques. So in comparison, our work is uh, to, uh, uh, aims to understand how to design an effective thumb to fingers touch interfaces for one-handed and ice-free interactions. So we therefore ask ourselves two questions. The first is, uh, where are the comfort regions on the fingers to allow users to easily manipulate the, 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 the touch widgets? And the second question is that, how the touch widget should be augmented what is the number, what is the limitation, and what's the proper layout of this kind of touch widgets? So the first question leads us to our study one, comfort regions. So in this study, we would like to examine the comfort regions for button and touchpad widgets, since uh, the two kind of widgets represent for discrete and continuous thumb-to-finger actions. So we, <laughs> we firstly segment our fingers into 12 segments and uh, ask, uh, ask uh, the participants to perform direct touch and uh, continuous uh, actions on each of the finger segments. So the participants have to report their physical comfort by following the five-point Likert scale. And this is the results of our um, first study. As you can see, these are the four distributions of the physical comforts on fingers. So if you look at the distributions, we'll, you will uh, notice two main factors that uh, affect the comfort regions. The first is the handiness. So according to our work on some test, there exists a significant difference between a uh, dominant and non-dominant hand. And also reported by the participants, they, uh, they think that the hand dexterity is very serious in, the, in this interaction. They might feel a little bit of uncomfortable if you if they have to perform the actions with their non-dominant hand. The second factor that uh, affects the comfort region, we think, is the, uh, we think is the thumb anatomy. So as you can see, if you look at the distribution, we will find that distribution is very similar to previous works about using the smartphone single-handedly. And participants also report that they think the muscle of the thumb and the joint of the thumb uh, seriously constrains the possible thumb movements during the interaction, therefore causing different physical comforts on the finger segments. So in the first study, we asked ourselves the first question, where are the comfort regions? And we found that the handiness and the thumb anatomy uh, there are the two main factors that might could affect, that might could affect the, the, the comfort regions. And therefore, based on the results in the following study, we only asked the participants to uh, perform the actions with their dominant hand, and we shrink the interaction area in study two and three uh, by using the finger segments containing physical comforts higher than three. So now let's move to the second human factor, the touch precision. So it, the touch precision human factor directly linked to the second question, how touch widgets should, should be augmented. For example, how the button widgets should be augmented on the fingers. So uh, we would like to know this question, so we, uh, we actually um, use a very 
brute force way, we uh, proposed a four button layout to seven button layout on our fingers and uh, assign the random targets on the user's finger and ask the participants to allocate the targets on the fingers in an ice-free manner. So we utilize the AI monitor for the position tracking. For more information of our position tracking, uh, please refer to our paper. So we, I want to, uh, I want to focus on the higher concept of our findings. So we have three main findings in this study. After compute out all of the accuracies of the button layouts, uh, we have three main findings. The first finding is that we found that uh, the accuracy decreased with the increasing number of buttons. So this is totally understandable since we believe that the, the tactile sensation, the skin tactile feedback, feedback has its own limitation. The, you, the participants tend to be more confused if too many buttons were augmented on their fingers. So this is understandable. So um, the second finding is that we found that the accuracy significantly decay from the first to the second finger segment which we believe is also reasonable since in the study one, the participants usually rate higher physical comforts on the first finger segment than the second finger segments. And uh, it suggests that uh, the inner thumb movement might cause more physical efforts. So uh, that's uh, the, our second finding. Our third finding is that surprisingly, the diagonal thumb movement is actually not, uh, does not affect, did not affect the physical, uh, the, the accuracies. Uh, we originally thought that uh, the motion efforts of uh, performing button tapping on index finger is more or less uh, on, the, on tapping on fin pinky finger. However, uh, the one way I know, the two way repeating measure I know by intercase, it is not the case. So now let's look at the last two findings. So we now notice that the inner thumb movement might affect the accuracy. However, the diagonal thumb movement may not. So we, we still believe that it's reasonable because if you look at the thumb anatomy, you will find that the diagonal movements in this study are still allocated in the comfort region as if we are using our smartphones. So uh, we still would like to uh, provide all of the participants a proper layout of button widgets. So we would like to provide a general layout. So we now uh, want to examine the each button layout and uh, under, we like to understand how many buttons could be augmented on each finger. So after our examination, we found that for index and middle fingers, you could uh, augment five buttons on them. And for ring fingers, you could augment four buttons on them. And pinky fingers, uh, two buttons is okay. So at least we could provide each participant 16 button layout which if you do, uh, consider that uh, it would be a really huge input power and allow the participants to perform various uh, interactions. And uh, if you would like to provide more input power to the participants, uh, we found a, another interesting phenomenon. So if, this is the four button layout of the index finger. So if you look at the, uh, the distribution, we, you will find that most of the participants could uh, perfectly divide the buttons on the first finger segment. However, the second finger, means, finger segments, uh, the participants cannot define, uh, recognize all of them well. So this suggests that if you would like to provide larger function sets, a non-uniform button set might be more suitable. So now let's go to the study three, the final study. So in the final study, we select the stroke, stroke gestures for the touchpad widgets since the performing the gestures in a nice free manner is a very important research question in mobile scenarios. So we selected six graffiti letters. Uh, these letters were considered hard to be recognized and performed accurately in a nice free manner as mentioned in previous works. So we, use, we used a high speed uh, camera in this study. The participants have to perform the graffiti letters in a nice free manner and the trajectory will be calculated and computed by our system. So we designed three conditions for this study. Index condition, index plus middle condition, and cover condition. So the first two conditions, we would like to know if the input area affects how accurate can the participants perform the stroke gestures. And for the last two conditions, we would like to know if blocking the tactile cues on fingers interfere the participants performing the graffiti gestures. So the trajectory will be fed 
to the graffiti recognizer, and our system will compute out all of the overall accuracy uh, recognition rates. However, the result is very uh, disappointing. If you look at the overall recognition rates, uh, it's uh, only nearly uh, 60%. And uh, the one-way ANOVA also suggests that uh, the input, not only the input area, but also the tactile cues are not used uh, by uh, the participants. So we began to wonder why, why the results are so bad. So we print out all of the trajectory performed by the participants and found that the trajectory were usually rotated or distorted. So this once again uh, indicates the importance of the thumb anatomy issue. So not only the thumb anatomy affect the Possible move, uh, move, move, move movements of the possible movement, but also interfere the possible moving directions of the thumb. So the participants interfere uh, unintentionally crooked or uh, distorted or rotated their thumb trajectory. Uh, also, uh, since the tactile cues were not used, the misalignment problem is also very serious. Therefore, uh, stand on these conclusions, we will notice that. Rule-based recognizer, such as a graffiti recognizer, uh, requiring the participants to perform straight lines and wheel curves, is not suitable in the thumb-to-finger touch interfaces. So maybe we should not to use rule-based recognizer, but to you to train a model for the stroke paths by the participants. So, but <coughs> <coughs> sorry, but uh, if we print out all of the trajectories. Uh, you will find another interesting phenomena. That is, um, participant, the writing behavior performed by the participants are totally different. However, the participants uh, seem to apply the same writing strategy for the same graffiti letters. The same phenomenon also occurred uh, on uh, graffiti letters D, O, R, and P. So this once again suggests that instead of using a general model to train by all the trajectory performed by the participants, maybe a personalized model might be better because the participants' writing behavior differs one by one. So these, uh, the results finally supports our assumption. So if we use the general model, the participants, the recognition rate can be boosted to um, 80%. However, a personalized model could be further boost the recognition rate to 92%. So uh, that's the conclusion of the, our final study. If we would like to provide better recognition model to the participants in thumb to fingers touching the faces, a personalized model might be better. So uh, now I would like to conclude the three studies. So we would like to propose, uh, propose some design principles the first design principle is that we all now know that the hand anatomy is very uh, important. It not only affects the comfort region, but also affects the, the layouts of different touch widgets. Also, although the tactile feedback were not was not used in the last study, however, for button tapping, the participants still need to need the landmarks on fingers to perform uh, to recognize many buttons on their fingers. Finally, uh, the crossed finger touchpad is very important. Although in our one-way ANOVA, it indicates that the input area is not related to the accuracy, but participants still report that larger input area provides uh, more physical comfort. Therefore, the crossed finger touchpad might be better. Finally, uh, since the button typing behavior and the uh, writing behavior between participants are very diverse. Maybe customized button layout or gesture recognizer will be better. So we finally would like to build a prototype that includes all the design principles we just proposed. So we are inspired by our, one of our previous work. The previous work is about uh, using the whole effect sensor grid augmented on the index finger and uh, try to compute the trajectory uh, of the thumb. So we extended this design to, a, a nail, uh, to our nail ring chain model. So this is the final prototype we present in our paper. It is a nail ring chain. So the nail ring chain uh, are cons composed by the, the, the interaction area of this nail ring chain, uh, consider the hand anatomy and the comfort regions. And also, uh, we also preserve the tactile feedback. And uh, the three by three nail part, uh, the nail parts are composed by a 3x3 whole effect sensor grid for cross-finger touchpads. 
and uh, the chain part composed by one by eight hole effect sensor stripe and uh, for the customized button layouts. So once the user wear on the nail ring chain, they could perform button taping, finger sliding, or cross finger uh, gestures. Okay, so we further build two prototypes. The first applica of two applications. The, the first application is a lamp controller. So as you can see, the user could perform the sliding, finger sliding to adjust the amplitude or the color of the lights. And uh, the second application is about the music player controller. The user can uh, write the, the song title and uh, play the song accordingly. So this is our conclusion. We've, uh, we, in this paper, we conduct three studies and uh, we propose the design principles according to the findings of the studies. And um, we would like to uh, contribute this uh, design principle to the future designer of thumb to fingers touching the faces. So this uh, pretty much, our, I would like to take this chance to thank Dr. Chen Yiling and uh, Jian Jin Yo, and also the Ministry of Science and Technology and, Me and the Media Tech. Thank you very much. And I'm glad to receive any questions. Hi, Daniel Ashbrook, Rochester Institute of Technology. It occurs to me that um, the most comfortable thing is maybe not always the best thing. If you imagine that you might have a problem with false positives, it's much easier for us to touch the ends of our fingers accidentally. Mm -hmm. And so perhaps a uh, uh, further design principle might be for uncommon operations or for seldom operations, you might touch the inner parts of your fingers. Yeah, we, we thought about this question. And uh, finally, we decided to use the bottle ta uh, uh, double tapping as an as a, as a event to trigger the thumb to fingers mm -hmm. interactions. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, in the future, uh, we could uh, perform like a rotating our wrist a little bit or so double taping or other mm -hmm. mechanisms to tr to uh, allow users to trigger this event without false positives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice work. Thank you. Okay, so if there's no other questions, that concludes the session. Uh, could we get a round of applause for all of us?